good afternoon, morning, whenever you're listening to this um, and watching this, students. Um, today, we're going to talk about something called the distributive property. So <clears throat> Um, depending on which course that you have been in, you've learned about different types of properties of numbers, such as like the associative and the commutative property. Um, or you may understand these properties without even knowing the names. So um, I suggest if you want to know about different properties of numbers, you go back and uh, watch the video entitled Properties of Numbers, um, just so that way you can see things like, you know, one of the properties of numbers is like, if we add two numbers, we can add them in any order. Or if we multiply two numbers, we can multiply them in any order. That's the commutative property. Today, we're going to talk about something that's very uh, specific to pre-algebra, and it is called the distributive property. Um, and so if we look at this word distribute, it means to give out. Um, so taking notes today, I actually am going to be taking them on this handout that you should have received. If you did not receive this handout, you can kind of pause throughout the video and just like copy this down into your notebook. Um, we are going to fold this and tape it into the notebook. So please make sure that you title the next page in your notebook, distributive property, and make sure that you also update your table of contents in your notebook. Okay. So Looking into the distributive property, the distributive property um, is a way that we can distribute or simplify an expression. So from previous lesson, remember an expression is showing some sort of mathematical statement and we have what are called numerical and algebraic expressions. So we're going to talk about how the distributive property applies to algebraic expressions. Um, and so the word distribute means to give out. And there's two ways that we can use the distributive property. So let's say, for instance, we have an expression that looks like this. Three times the group X plus eight. Now, we have no idea what X is equal to. However, if we were to set this up as an equation, and if we were to set this up equal to something, in order to solve for x, the distributive property can help us simplify the equation and make the steps a little bit clearer on what to do. So <clears throat> because the word distribute means to give out, what we are going to do is we are going to give out whatever number it is that we are multiplying um, to the group. So what this means is three groups of x plus 8. Okay, So if we wanted to write this out as repeated addition, it would look like this x plus 8, x plus 8, and x plus 8. Um, there you go. So that way you can see. And so if I was to add all of these expressions up, okay, remember I need to combine my like terms. So the like terms in this, I can add up all these 8s together. That makes 24. And if I have three x's, remember x is the same as 1x. So 3x's combined is 3x. So this expression, when we use a distributive property, can simplify to 3x plus 24. And you'll come to see that we would rather have our equations in this format, where we have our coefficient and variable, and then plus or minus some constant, and then whatever the solution is, whatever's on the other side of the equal sign. Um, we would rather have it in this format instead of this format, because it makes solving for the variable much easier and much more, sometimes much more obvious as well, too. So this is kind of the long way to do the distributive property. A short way is to actually use, instead of repeated addition, to use multiplication, because multiplying is a quicker way to do repetitive addition. So the way that we can multiply, and we're going to end up with the same expression, is we're going to multiply the number on the outside of the parentheses by each term on the inside of the parentheses. So we have two terms. We have x and we have 8 inside um, on the parentheses. Remember, a term is what is on either side of like the mathematical symbol. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Um, and then we're going to make sure we keep the inside sign. So the plus sign here, we're going to keep that as part of our simplified expression. So one way that I like to visualize uh, the distributive property is I like to draw an arrow from the three to the x and the three to the eight, or from the outside term to the first term, from the outside term to the second term. And just to remind myself to multiply, so I just kind of use the asterisk to mean multiplication. So if I multiply three times each of these terms, I'm gonna multiply three times X, and then I'm also gonna multiply three times eight. 
and I'm going to keep the plus sign in between these two terms. And so now if I simplify these terms, 3x or 3 times x can just be written as 3x, and 3 times 8 is 24. And I'm going to keep that same expression here. So you see, we end up with the same thing, only we had much... We didn't have as much to write. We had much less steps. We just multiplied the outside term by each term. And again, this makes our life a lot easier when it comes to solving an equation. Um, at the end of this video, I will show you kind of why the distributive property works. Um, if you're curious, you don't have to take notes on that. I'll just have it as a little bonus if you're curious. Okay, so here are a couple of more um, examples. Let's do, I'm gonna do two with you. And then for the last one, um, I'm going to ask you to like pause and try it on your own. So I'm going to do these two right here and then I'll have you pause and try this one on your own. So I have the, the term five times Y plus two. So using the distributive property, I can simplify this by multiplying the outside term five times the first term Y, the outside term five times the inside term two. So five times Y and five times two. And I'm going to keep the addition sign in between the two problems. So 5y could be written as 5y. And 5 times 2 is 10. And if I keep the addition sign, this is another way to rewrite the expression 5 times the group y plus 2. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's try one where maybe we have some coefficients. So you'll notice the terms on the inside now they have a coefficient attached to them. So we're still gonna take the outside term and multiply it times each of the terms on the inside of the parentheses. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of look at what we can actually combine. So I have two times seven E plus two times five M. Sorry, that parentheses doesn't look so great. This is two times five M. Um, so if I want to combine these like terms, now I know that two doesn't have an E attached to it. So if we were adding these, I couldn't do it because the E is not attached to the two. They're not like terms. However, when we multiply two times seven E is basically saying like seven E plus seven E or two times seven, which would be 14 E. Two times five M is essentially saying five M plus 5m, or 5 times, or I'm not sorry, 5 plus 5, which is 10m. And if we keep that addition sign, here's the way that we can simplify this expression. So essentially, we can take a constant and multiply it by a coefficient. Because again, multiplying is just a form of repetitive addition. And you'll notice, we actually do have like terms. So this is kind of why these can simplify here. Okay, so I want you to now take this problem, four times the group X plus 10 and try it on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. And then once you think you have an answer, unpause and see if you got it correct. All right, so if we distribute four to both terms, we should have four X plus four times 10, which is four X plus 40. That is what this one simplifies to. Hopefully you got it right when you tried it on your own. Um, the biggest thing that people forget is they forget to distribute the term to the second or third number. If We can have more than just two things inside the parentheses, but they forget to distribute the term to each member of the group. Okay, so don't forget you have to distribute to both or all three or however many numbers or terms are inside of the parentheses. Okay, um, if you're feeling pretty good, uh, you do not need to rewatch the video. Let me show you what your practice questions are. So go ahead and take a moment to pause on the practice questions. You have four times the group six plus X, negative 11 times the group 14 plus two X. You have 12 times three M minus four P and then negative seven X minus 10. Okay, now don't forget your integer rules. Um, if you get a solution where you subtract a negative, okay, 
if this is happening, I would like for you to rewrite that as addition. Because when we subtract a negative, it's the same thing as adding. So if you get a situation where it simplifies to like subtracting a negative, go ahead and just replace that with a plus sign. And if you're not sure what that means, ask me in class and I'll kind of show you what that means, okay? Um, and for those of you that are curious, uh, when we use the distributive property, if we had like the problem three times the group four plus two, okay? The order of operations tells us that we can add what's in parentheses. So four plus two is six and then multiply um, times the term or the next number. So three times six would be 18, okay? Um, the distributive property also gets us 18. If I do three times four, which is 12, plus three times two, which is six, I also get 18. So in order of operations problems, like what we just did, it's not the most efficient method. But when it comes to uh, simplifying our expressions for equations, it is the most efficient method because we have variables. So um, here are the practice questions again, if you need, please come to me in class if you have any questions and I will see you soon.